This is one of a series of videos produced by the Further Mathematics Support Programme for A-Level Maths Revision. In this video I'm looking at the AQA D2 specification and it's question 4 from the June 2010 paper. We're told that um, we have two people, Roger and Corey, who are playing a zero-sum game and that the payoff matrix for Roger is given in the table. We're asked in the question to find the optimal mixed strategy for Roger and show that the value of the game is 7 thirteenths and given that that's the value of the game find the optimal mixed strategy for Cory. So in the first part of the question then we're looking at a mixed strategy for Roger so the way to do this is to first of all say that let Roger play R1 with probability P and R2 with probability 1 minus P. And then look at the expected gains for the different um, things that Corey can do. So if C plays C1, then the expected gain for Roger is given by just substituting these numbers from the table 7 and negative 2 multiplying that by the probabilities so we have 7 P and then plus or I suppose minus 2 multiplied by 1 minus P so that gives you a value of 9 P minus 2 in a similar way, Cory plays C2, we get 3p minus 1 minus p, and that's 4p minus 1, and finally playing C3, negative 5p plus 4 is 1 minus p, and that's 4 minus 9p. Well, we can now put the lines that we've produced, or the, those equations, 9p minus 2, etc., onto a graph. The axis here shows the different values of the probability going from 0 up to 1, and then the vertical axis is the expected gain. So for C1, when p is equal to, uh, sorry, p is equal to 0, it starts off at negative 2, so this is va this value here, and when p is equal to 1, it goes up to 7. So we have a line going from negative 2 up to 7. It's always worth labelling that with where it came from. So this comes from Corey playing C1. Or you could label it with the equation 9p minus 2 if you wish. The second one, 4p minus 1. So that goes from negative 1 up to 3. and labelling that, that came from C2. Finally, we've got a line which starts at 4 and finishes at negative 5. And that came from C3. And the reason for labelling is because we now want to find the highest point which is below all of these lines. So I just go through, just looking at the highest point, you can see that it reaches it at this intersection here and that's got to be found then by solving the equation so now we can see that that intersection comes from looking at C2 and C3 so we need to solve uh, the equations that come from C2 and C3 in other words we want to solve 4p minus 1 is equal to 4 minus 9p and when we do that we can see that we get 13p is equal to 5 or p is equal to 5 thirteenth and therefore we can say that Roger should play uh, his two strategies R1 with probability 5 over 13 
and R2, therefore, with probability equal to 8 over 13. The value of the gain comes from just substituting that into one of the equations for the expected gain. It doesn't really matter which one. So if we take the um, top equation, for example, the value comes from 9p minus um, Yes, yeah, sorry, I used the uh, equation C1. Of course, it's, it's one of C2 or C3 I need, so uh, 4p minus 1. And that will give me 4 multiplied by 5 over 13 minus 1. So that's 20 over 13 minus 13 over 13 or 7 over 13. So we've showed that the value of the game is 7 over 13. The marking for this part of the question was to give a method mark and an accuracy mark for this part here working out these equations a method mark an answer mark for using the graph and then three marks a method mark an a mark for getting the probability 5 over 13 and an E mark for the explanation with finally B mark here for the uh, showing that it was equal to 7 over 13 as the value of the gain. With the next part of the question then we're asked to show that given that the value of the game is 7 over 13 um, to find the optimal mix strategy for Cori. Now there are different ways of doing this. One way is to allocate probabilities to C1, C2 and C3. However, from part A of the question, we can simply state that uh, the, the probability that she plays C1 will be equal to zero. That's because the solution came from C2 and C3, if you remember. So what we could do then is let Cori plays C2 with probability Q and C3 with probability 1 minus Q. The uh, expected gain would come from uh, 3Q then if we take this one here 3Q and then minus 5 times 1 minus Q. And that will be equal to the value of the game, 7 over 13. So if we then calculate that, we end up with 8q minus 5 is equal to 7 over 13. And so that 8q is equal to 5 plus 7 over 13. Well, 5 is 65 13. So in total, we've got 72 over 13. And therefore, dividing through by 8, Q is equal to 9 over 13. And so the, um, the optimal s mix strategy for Cori is to play C1 uh, never, C2 with probability equal to 9 over 13 and C3 with probability equal to 4 over 13. Right, the um, marking for that part, five marks available. The marking was as follows. Uh, an E mark, explanation mark, for simply saying that at the part that uh, the probability of C1 was equal to zero. Then method marks and two accuracy marks, uh, answer marks for producing the equation and the result for Q9 over 13. And then finally, an E mark for stating the result. 
Uh, that's the end of that particular question. You can find videos of other questions at www.furthermaths.org.uk.